What's your latest obsession? Just the fact that people seem to be getting dumber and dumber. You know, I mean, we have all this amazing technology, and yet computers have turned into basically four-figure wank machines. The internet was supposed to set us free, democratize us, but you know, people uh, they don't they don't write anymore. They blog instead of talking. They text. No punctuation. No grammar. LOL this and LMFAO that. You know, it just seems to me that it's just a bunch of stupid people pseudo communicating with a bunch of other stupid people in a proto language that resembles more what cavemen used to speak than the King's English. To say it's been a pivotal and strange few years for Nakai Sun and RWB would be underselling the challenges of operating a global brand that's largely been buttoned down at home since 2020. Of course, you all know by now the focus on 997s is well underway, a change in direction that's been met with some resistance. Although as I've learned, this is a celebration of the craftsman as much as it is of the craft. I imagine both cutting up a 997 turbo and stuffing a Corvette engine in a 993 will elicit a similar reaction in many of you. Will's 993 is one of the builds that marks his return to Vancouver, and looking back, my camera did the work when it needed to. You know, I only stopped by for the good conversations and display of teamwork that's evident every time I go to one of these builds. It's an environment that's never grown stale even eight years after shooting my friend Sid's build back in 2016. Will dailies this car, which some of you guys might find uh, pretty insane. Uh, <laughs> there's definitely a fine line between like a show car RWB and then something you take to the track, but dailying it in the winter here in Vancouver, I personally think is pretty badass. Uh, we've got Elvis here from the Golden Drive. We're gonna hop in. <laughs> Yeah, my feet like go in. Yeah, a little bit. Still on yeah, the rails. Yeah, and it's interesting. Though. The pedal position is like to the right. Yes, it goes Everything towards to the, the right. Tunnel. Yeah, I've also heard that with like Lam Lambos. Like Mercies. Yes, they yes. do that a lot. Yeah. All right, All right. let's go. Send it. Send I'm it. <laughs> very excited for this. I'm stoked. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, very short travel. I'm gonna so go up here and turn around. Oh, easy. Really. Easy. Sounds so good. You guys, I could not oh shoot another gosh. LS car without bringing Elvis back. <laughs> yes. Because you you got your own projects on the go. You're swapping stuff. Yes, yeah, so I have two LS swaps right now, both in the middle. They're both Jaguars, but this is on another level of awesome. Yeah. All right, clutch throw is really short. Gas is heavy and short. That is It's nice. pretty good. That was not, okay, so what are we talking here? We're talking LS3, uh, which is, yeah, your basic 6.2 when they bumped up from 5.7 to 6.2 in the C6 Corvette and Camaro. I think that's what pretty much people go with if they want an aluminum block LS. Obviously, yes. some people will go with like a truck engine. Yes, so specifically in my, uh, in my LS swap Jags, I have um, uh, aluminum, sorry, Aluminum heads, but uh, steel or uh, cast iron, iron block. block yeah. Um, so they say the the cast iron can hold more boost, and I plan to boost mine. Nice. Um, <laughs> but still, you're you can't go wrong. I think with an LS swap. It's I agree. Just great. I agree. If it fits, and it, it just like 2,000 RPM, <laughs> and it pins you back. I'm not going to push it to the the degree of like I'm sure the grip could take it because there is an incredible amount of grip here yes as with any RWB oh my gosh and one thing to note like mentioned earlier he <laughs> he has an accu sump in this which is like between a dry sump and a wet sump pretty much okay um, so it pretty much has a sensor that detects if there's low oil pressure because the LS's have a problem with oil with starvation. Oiling. Yeah. Yeah. Same with so, RBs. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty amazing. That's a good middle ground, I feel like, without going super expensive for the dry sump. For the dry sump. And dry sump is just uh, wildly impractical for a street car most of the time. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> steering is not as heavy as it is. Like, so the only other RWB I've driven is Sid's car. No power steering. Okay. So you can imagine with like 295s up front, no power steering. Yeah. It's a workout. This yeah. is. This has power steering. Yes. Yes. So that helps a lot. It does. 993s are 
of course the last air cooled, mm -hmm. but they're still very modern in a lot of ways. What was that sound? Did something fall off? I just heard something. I did. I think it was a, a pebble or a okay. rock. <laughs> we gotta <laughs> we gotta open the windows. You know, though, that's the thing with swapped cars. I mean, this is probably done great and amazing. Yeah. But it's, it's just my intuition with a swapped car. Or <laughs> things are it's falling like, off. Oh my gosh! What was that? <laughs> Momo steering wheel. We do have a 996 transmission. Yeah. Uh, so this is my uh, 1997 993 Audi VP. Uh, so I have a shop in Richmond, BC. Uh, it's called Autodromo Racing and Development. So we do a lot of performance mod. Oh, if, if you asked me a couple years ago and and say that I would own this car and then ever been to the HQ and see Nakai San personally and do it on one of my personal car, I would tell you that it's insane. That's yeah. surreal. Yeah. I think it was right after we visited the HQ together. Uh, we bought the car as a shell, a rolling shell, has everything but an engine. It was also automatic. And we always had the idea of doing the LS swap and the white body. It was a really good deal. When I saw it on the Facebook market, marketplace, I was like, we gotta get it. I don't wanna say the price, but it was so cheap compared to what it is right now. Got all the conversion kit, engines, and you know, wired the money to Nakai and waited for three years. Three years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is, do you know what the waiting time is now? It's about two to three years. Okay. We ne we basically had the whole car and the engine and adapted it on the side of the shop for a good two, two and a half years. And then when, when that guy was like, oh, I'm coming in two months. And then we started putting all the engines, component, everything, the transmission together in like three weeks. Wow. Until he showed up and, and paint the body kit as well too. That feel like, oh, Wait, I, I still had the car. I, I forgot I had the kit. <laughs> yes. Three years of ways, it's like, oh yeah, my body kit is somewhere still in Japan and it's getting shipped to, to me, finally. Uh -huh. We're gonna wind it out. Yeah. The shifter is Caps. crazy notchy. Oh yeah, we're at half. Yeah, yeah that's fine. We're right? fine for now, yeah. What does the rev do? Oh, there we oh go. Oh my gosh. And... Oh, she goes. It's different sizes of kits and different options of course now this wing 
not particularly my taste, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, <laughs> what it's, do you think? You think it's too big? It's a little bit too tall, but it's, <laughs> it's in the spirit of RWB, so I get it. Yes. I, for one, I love the wing. I love very extreme <laughs> things. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, yo, this wing is sick. I mean, it flows with the rest of the kit. Mm -hmm. What is that? Noise? Overheating? Oh, oil pressure. Oil pressure. Oh, low oil That's pressure? That's not good. We should turn off the car. Yeah, LSs sit at like 50 psi. A little pr That's like the max, like the tank. If you're getting a okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's our WBs get a lot of attention, obviously. Yeah, I know. Oh my gosh. Um, while we're waiting for the car to cool down for a second, <laughs> heavenly wide fenders. He's got the fender wings on the rear, yeah. which is something our friend Sid. If you guys know, when we we're uh, actually recently, just a few months ago, when this car was getting built, he also got Nakai son to come over just because he wanted to add the fender wings. That is cool. I think the fender wings make it so distinctive because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of RVs, but I don't think I've ever seen one with the fender wings before. And it's just, it's just so cool. It's just a nice touch. It's like a little, you know, mm. yeah, it's, it's like it's a little pinky raise. Yes. yes. And of course, the GT2 style wing. Yes which is rad. It's a sick car. So being a water cool engine in the back, uh, we had to put the radiator all the way to the front, the front. Uh, initially, we punched a, a hole over here, but we found out that uh, we're still overheating a little bit. So what it did is we cut this and then we push, basically pushed the original hood down and then weld two pieces over here to make the make the radiator go cool better. Uh, still struggling a little bit. Uh, what we're thinking to do is uh, maybe add uh, two extra smaller radiator up front on the side, mm -hmm. which is actually what the, the air cool ones are. They have the oil radiator cooler in the, in the front on, on both sides, which actually right now there's still a ton of room right now. Uh, so that, that's the idea of trying to make it cooler. Yeah, so this is the okay. That's just a sticker, but this is uh, this is actually a oil pressure tank. So you, you can still retain the original oil pan, but then you add a tank with pressure on it. So it has a it has a valve over there. When when it sense that the pressure is getting low, it will just push uh, extra oil to the to the engine itself. It was pretty easy to fit inside the the engine bay. Actually, there's a ton of room. Uh, pretty much we bought this kit from Renegade Hybrid. Uh, it just comes with that engine mount that holds the engine together and custom made a transmission mount in the front and that's all that's holding the drivetrain together. But it's running 280, uh, 285 tires in the front and 335 in the back. And they both works L1 3P. Uh, the back is 13 and a half inch wide. And even with that, we, we are still running 42 millimeter spacers just to get the, the spec right with the wide body kit. Yeah, so that's that's like one of the potential downsides of an RWB kit mm -hmm. and like how it, it really depends on what the owner wants to, how they want to build it and if they mm -hmm. want to go ahead and change suspension geometry and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But a lot of guys, especially if they're not tracking the car, mm -hmm. they'll just throw on a huge spacer, yeah. which is fine for street driving. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have, do you have intentions of taking it on the track at all or? That, that's a plan. After we fig uh, figure out all the cooling issues, uh, that, that will be the plan to be uh, hitting the track. <laughs> We are coming after you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was a C7, you guys, that passed. You're, you're right. The throttle is almost, it's like nothing, nothing, nothing. And then, <laughs> and then you're just gone. Yeah, this is nice. It sounds so good. It sounds amazing. It's very smooth. And Will does have a plan. He actually does have a cam he wants to put in here, a low P cam, like a okay. stage one, stage two, uh, to make it more of like a, you know, yeah. Give it some more hot top end power. And it's interesting, we were talking about this earlier too. The whole reason why people like the older 911s is because they were still small. Yes. The RWB has made it the size of like a new 999. I know. <laughs> it's so cool. The steering is so light. Yeah. The shifter is good, but sometimes I'm like, ugh. Trying to get it in there. Yeah, you don't get it the right shift properly yeah. the first time. God, yeah. this is good. First off, how do you feel about an RWB 997? Oh, 
sick. You like so them? Sick. Okay. What about you? As long as you're not cutting up the, the precious low amount of GT3s and GT3 RSs that are left <laughs> that I one day want to buy, <laughs> then I'm cool with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. And okay. too, that's what makes this I'm car. Slow down. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> Sorry, that's what makes this car what? Oh, we got a WRX chasing us. Lots of attention. Um, that's what makes this car that that's what made this car a good candidate because it was an automatic yeah. 993, which nobody really wants. <laughs> Nobody really wants, uh, and shifter. they're not rare. Yes. Sorry, this shifter is just... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you don't want it to be so short, yeah, I, I would of, go with something else. It's not my favorite thing in the world, and I've driven quite a few Porsches, but still. The front end is a little bit light, honestly. Yeah, that's a good way. It's a yeah. little bit light, yeah. so that's one thing. This is a fantastic car. The power band is everywhere. Like, there's yeah. power everywhere. There's noise and torque everywhere yeah so which so, is sorry no, um, just, which is why people ls swap cars yeah it's obvious. i know <laughs> so if you had a 993 yeah would you ls swap it oh yeah uh, would you do yeah. this yeah i think so because okay. if if i'm buying a 993 i'm not going after the gt3 feel yeah which is like 8000 plus rpm mm -hmm. if i was buying a 997 i would not ls swap it there's no way but 993 uh oh, uh -oh. I would potentially do that. Dang it, what do I do? Uh, Go back or stop? We, we can stop here. So this is a full jump clear special livery. Uh, years ago, I saw this uh, concept from Kaiser. He had the RV with the jump clear special uh, livery on and I, it has been my wallpaper on my laptop since. And I, I just I told myself if I ever had the RV built, and this is the delivery I want, and that's also the cigarette I smoke anyway, <laughs> day to day. Nice. As you know, we, I had a 944 Turbo LS swap before. This I miss awesome. that car every day. Yeah. Uh, that car was uh, very fun to drive. Do you want to talk about what happened to it or no? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to. Uh, the um, driver miscalculation and roll off the Sea to Sky Highway and a couple, 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 couple rolls and it landed upside down and it's, uh, it's gone. Thank God to the, uh, the roll cage that I have in, in the back of the 944 so I was able to still stand here and talk about and build another LS Porsche. Yeah. That's good, we're glad you're here dude. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's why I'm adding the roll cage, thanks. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the 993, I feel like before they became collectible, was always almost like the black sheep was like before they were not, they were not as appreciated as yes. they are now, a few years ago. Again, one of my favorite things about this car is you can just see the rear bumper with the wing and the, and the whole, whatever, that triangular air, is that an air channel or something? And oh that yeah, 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 thing. yeah, oh, that's an intake for sure. Yeah, the intake, it's just so cool that you can just see all of that in the mirror. And I think that is just, yeah. Mm. Also, I do like the carbon surrounds on the gauges he has. I also love that he is not gonna go digital display for now. No, yeah, I really like that, like the Porsche analog gauges because even in the new 992s, they're amazing and all that, but the digital stuff is just, I'm like, come on. Agreed, Put Analog, man. Agreed. Just leave it analog. Porsche does it right, even in the 992. It's like, the tack, mm -hmm. big in the center, analog, yes. that's what we need. Yep. Yeah. It's like sensory overload. It is. Overload. Yeah. Like filming with the camera, like, oh my gosh, there's this line and that line and this. And I like that he made it into, like, it's his own, like, it doesn't look like any other RWB. And that is just glorious. We're going to leave it right there, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming out, dude. Yep. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, leave me hanging. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. Elvis shot some stuff for his own channel. Go check it out. The links are in the description. Will stuff is there too, and yeah, we hope hopefully we captured all those details I know. adequately. Oh, so cool. <laughs> See yes. you soon. Well, there it is, you guys. Yeah. So when I asked Will what was that moment for him where either he knew he wanted an RWB or when it just kind of hooked him, and if you're watching this video, you could span anywhere from a casual uh, RWB or air-cooled Porsche 911 fan to hey, you know all of the builds, and I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Uh, there are people that fly all around the world following the Kai Sun. Uh, in fact, our friend Sid uh, is actually right now on his way to Atlanta to go watch another build. He's coming in from 
uh, Hong Kong. Right now he was in Thailand. He was at another build earlier this year. Um, so there's a lot going on and he is actually the reason why I went to Japan right before the, the pandemic. The timing was crazy. Uh, and of course, how I met him originally, how I was introduced into RWB, if you guys care, this is why I'm putting this at the end of the video, was back in 2016 at his build. And it wasn't actually at the build when I, I kind of found myself like being hooked by the whole thing uh, and wanting to just be around the cars and the owners more because it is just about the people you meet at the builds and, and uh, professional and personal relationships that come with that. Uh, but it wasn't until I actually were, was editing that video after, when I was editing the video and like it all came together, the music that I wanted of this artist that I had like reached out to, and that, that was my moment. And for Will, I, I can't speak for him, but for me, another one was going to RWBHQ uh, and just seeing that in the flesh there. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. We'll be back very soon. See you again.